Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you all. This is Jamila from Friends of Cancer Patients. Today, in collaboration with University of Sharjah, we are going to present a health webinar under the title of Psychological Support for Women with Breast Cancer. Dr. Jacqueline Maria Diaz, Associate Professor, Chair of the Department of Nursing College of Health Sciences. Uh, Dr. Jackie, thank you so much uh, for your time and uh, great support to present uh, this health webinar uh, to the cancer patients and their families. Uh, please go ahead. The slot is for you. Thank you so much. Chair and Associate Professor, Department of Nursing, College of Health Sciences, University of Sharjah. Caravan and for providing me this opportunity to present the findings. And if you can see on the slide here, it shows that the pink caravan has been in existence since 2011. And from the numbers that are reported here, you can see the number of people that were examined, the reference, people who undergone mammograms, ultrasounds, breast cancer in males and females, um, UAE nationals and residents, and how many positive cases have been identified. So you can understand the importance of this topic. The Pink Caravan has had a number of activities that have been doing a number of people. And this is again a graphic representation of what the Pink Caravan has been doing here in the United Arab Emirates. Let me start with talking about how is the breast designed, the anatomy of the breast. We all know that the breasts sit on the chest, muscle, and colors the ribs. Each breast is made of about 15 to 20 lobes. The lobes contain many smaller lobules. The lobules contain groups of tiny glands that produce milk. And we know that this milk flows from the lobules through the thin tubes called ducts to the nipple. The nipple is in the center of the dark area of the skin and is referred to as the areola. Fat fills the spaces between the lobules and the ducts. Just some general information about breast cancer. We know that out of 100 newly diagnosed breast cancer cases, there will be 99 cases affecting women and one case affecting men. Although diagnosis rate for men is low, it is still an important concern as breast cancer in men tends to be very aggressive and the survival rate is often low, easy to diagnose. Out of 10 lumps, 8 are benign. And 98% of the breast cancer cases are curable if detected early. So, when we talk of prevention, we know that women, because the purpose of this presentation is exclusively for females, we know that women are at risk. And we know that exercise, hormonal replacement, therapy, alcohol, breastfeeding, not having children and obesity, thing of risk factors, but they can be controlled. We all have lifestyle choices that we can adopt, which includes eating a diet high in fruits, vegetables, whole grain, and low in saturated fat, maintaining a healthy weight, exercising regularly, controlling our blood pressure, avoiding smoke and alcohol, and choosing a less stressful life by getting an adequate sleep, getting better at managing our stress, either through meditation, yoga, prayer, or whatever else. So, now, risk factors, as we've talked about, are women over 450 are more prone to it. A family history of breast cancer, if they have not given birth to any child, or if they've had their first child after 35 years. Those who have menstruated before the age of 12 or have a late onset menopause. Secretion from the nipple, a history of cancer in the family. If they eat foods rich in fat, consume alcohol regularly and smoking, even if it's passive smoking and the use of contraceptives. Or 
these have been known to be risk factors. So yes, we have to protect ourselves from breast cancer by doing regular self-breast examinations, regular clinical examinations after the age of 40 years, every two years. If there's a family history, mammography will be done early so to reduce your risk of developing cancer. But in spite of doing all these self-breast examinations, taking care of yourself, you still may feel a suspicious lump or you may see a change in the breast shape or size or there is a retraction of the nipple, a change in the color or texture of the skin, discharge especially bloody secretions from the nipple and continuous pain in the breast in one place. If you are experiencing any of these signs and symptoms, please consult your physician as soon as possible. So the question then comes to ourselves, what is breast cancer? We know it begins in the cells of the breast and can grow and destroy the surrounding tissue thereby what is called it metastasizes to other parts of the body. So let's look at some of these early breast cancer may not have symptoms. So if you see a persistent lump or a thickening in the breast or in the armpit area, it's a cause for concern. Changes in the color of the skin or the breast, the areola, the nipple, dimpling, puckering or scaling, all are things that you should monitor for and check it out. A newly retracted or inverted pull-up nipple, blood on the discharge from the nipple, and a change in the size or shape of the breast means you should see the doctor as soon as possible. Now, the doctors may have different treatments and will advise you which one is best for you. But it's very important that we look at what is the best thing for ourselves. So is it radiation therapy? Is it chemotherapy? Is it hormonal therapy? Or is it going to be surgery? And these Now, when a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, she will face many challenges. And there is damage sometimes to the heart muscle because of the medications that she may receive. The functioning of the nervous system, there may be tingling, there may be sensation, there may be a weight gain. There's changes in self-esteem and sexual functioning menopause can set in early, she'll find herself taking time to go to sleep and a sense of feeling tired. Women with breast cancer also face a lot of psychosocial distress. Distress from just the knowing the diagnosis. When the bad news is broken by the doctor that they have got breast cancer, that itself takes its toll on a woman. And treatment. Treatment is long, it's prolonged, it's multiple times. You have to see the doctor, you're losing your hair, you lose your nails. These all take its toll on the female. So what is psychosocial distress? It's multifactorial. Emotional experience of the psychological, which includes cognitive, behavioral, emotional, social, and or spiritual nature that may interfere to cope effectively with cancer, its physical symptoms, and its treatment. Distress extends a longer continuum, ranging from normal feelings of feeling vulnerable, sad, fear, to problems that become disabling, such as depression, anxiety, panic, social isolation, and existential and spiritual crisis. Now, women have 
have reported, and it's in the literature, that there is a lot of psychological and psychosocial concerns. There's always the fear that it can reoccur, it can come back again. There's always, they are fearful of the future. What does the future hold for us? They are faced with guilt that because of them, other family members, sisters, daughters can be victims of the breast cancer. Physical symptoms such as pain, fatigue, trouble sleeping, trouble concentrating, these are very, very acute symptoms that they have. The entire thing of the body image disruption, their sexual function, is my husband going to leave me for another woman? Am I going to face divorce? Is my husband going to find a younger woman? How is he going to receive me without a breast? Even the ability to make appropriate treatment decisions is a great source of psychological and psychosocial concern. Should I go for chemotherapy? Should I go for radiotherapy? Should I go for surgery? Which one would be the best option for me? Women have reported that communication problems with their spouse or their partners exist once they're diagnosed with breast cancer. They feel very vulnerable, vulnerable to their partner, vulnerable to society. There are a lot of existential concerns regarding morality. Did I do something wrong? There's the fear of death. There are family issues and communication issues about economic hardship. Is this going to affect my job? How am I going to be seen by my colleagues? Will insurance pay for my treatment? All of these are really heavy issues that the woman faces. Now, a woman that's undergoing breast cancer needs support. And sometimes it may just be accompanying a woman for an appointment with the doctor. You know, just to, to, for another person to hear. Remember, the stress is so much that they don't listen or they don't hear what the doctor is saying. Sometimes they might have preparations of meals. You know, just help. Help with activities of daily living. And they need someone to be available to hear their fears and concerns without shun. No, 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 it's okay. Everything is going to be fine. I believe that the role of the family plays a vital role. And not just the husband, the children, the sister in law, the mother in law. Because we know it is the most frequent cause of cancer, there's a quality of life and there's a high economic burden on the family. The physical problems I just highlighted to you. We know that they can have distress, but it could also range from distress going up to continuing to depression. And there could be chemotherapy and its side effects. Very often, I have seen over my experience, is that a supportive group therapy has helped women with breast cancer when they hear of other women and what other is there. And I can give you an example here. That's very, when a woman has to see chemotherapy and she loses her hair. One of the things that I've learned from my experience, and I'd like to share this here, is, you know, when the hair is growing back following the chemotherapy, we don't want any shampoos with a lot of sulfur in it. The best one is Johnson's Baby Shampoo because it is so mild. The second thing that I've learned from the women is do not massage the head because the roots are growing and the hair will fall. So gently apply it and wash your head. Something simple that I have picked up is when, when I work with support groups for cancer. And I've learned this from patients who have gone through it. So you can see how supportive Somebody who I can call at 2 a.m. in the morning and have that person talk to me and tell me what is happening. That for me is the most important thing. Something women may not be able to talk with a husband, but with another female. Sometimes in our support groups, 
we engage in a number of creative modalities. And what do I mean by that? Let people express themselves by drawing, by song, by poem. Because all of these alternate ways, these creative ways, help the woman come to terms with. And I'll share with you down the road things that I picked off the internet. The people who had cancer have published these things. So this has helped the women to cope. Now, the psychological support does not stop them. But anyone who's had breast cancer needs follow-up care. And follow-up care is very, very important. It's recommended every three to six months for the next three years after completion of treatment or as prescribed by your doctor. And then every six to 12 months for the next two years and a year afterwards if you're symptom-free. However, if you do have some signs, you need to inform the healthcare immediately. So reoccurrence is greatest within five years. And women who are diagnosed with breast cancer also have a high risk of developing cancer in the opposite breast as well, as well as cancer of the colon, ovary, and uterus. So it is frightening, and therefore you do. So when do you inform your, the healthcare team if you feel a new or worse pain, especially in your hips, legs, or back? If you have a cough that does not subside, unexplained weight loss, fatigue that gets worse, swelling or lymphedema in your arm or hand or the same side of the tumor, a headache that does not go away, that's not relieved with the Panadol, numbness or tingling in your hands and feet, and if you have any vaginal spot, spotting and bleeding and shortness of breath. Now, when you do go and see the doctor for the follow-up visit, just to make you aware, because this, again, is very psychologically devastating for the woman, the doctor would do a clinical breast examination. He would check the surgical area to see how well it has healed. He would check the scar. He'd feel the lymph nodes under your arm, in the neck, and around the collarbone. He would look for any swelling in the hand or the arm on the same side of the body or the as the surgery. He will check your lungs and he will feel your abdomen for any swelling or fluid that may be present. Now, he may also order some blood chemistry to see if the cancer has spread to the lungs and the liver. He will also order a bone scan to see if the cancer has spread to the bones. He may order a chest x-ray. He may order an abdominal ultrasound or a CT scan. So these further investigations are all necessary to check if there's any cancer that is, if he feels any of the breast cancer reoccurrence is taking place. That. I want to just close with me. It's me again, only better. I fought the battle and won. Now I'm back, better than ever. For cancer has been a mirror held up in front of me. It forced me to take a good look of myself and bluntly asked, where are you going? It made me redefine my priorities, teaching me that it is really the little things that make life sweet. It gave me the vision to see angels walking amongst us calling themselves friends and family, touching my life deeper than I ever dreamed possible. Cancer asked me to embrace the change in myself, the change that forced me to grow and become the person I always wanted to be but never seemed to have the time to achieve. And change always involves risk. Stepping from the known into the unknown, I had to embrace uncertainty and accept that I was not in control. It's been the ultimate test of my character, forcing me to trust my heart and reach deep, deep inside for the strength and power I never knew I had. I came to realize that even though I had cancer 
I was never a victim. I am a survivor in heart and spirit and always will be, even if that death takes me to the last breath. Cancer truly is a defining moment, a moment that made me redefine the impossible. And since I did, nothing will ever be the same. It will be better. Cancer survivor. So as we go along, yes, there is always hope and we believe in hope. There's a cloud overhead. You've gotten bad news. You can give up in fear or you or hope you can choose. You can choose to have hope. You can choose to have faith. You can choose to have guidance if you just choose to pray. I know it's a struggle moment by moment to get through each day when you're feeling so broken. But if you look to the Lord, the God of all answers, there you'll find hope. There's hope in your prayers. And prayers are accessible always at hand. And God hears them all. It's all part of his plan. So choose to be brave, take hold of your fear. You choose to have hope when you choose to have prayer. So I just thought this is something that we use and it can be done irrespective of your, it can be useful also. Just wanted to share that with you. And with that, what are my takeaway messages? The survivor of breast cancer is survivors of breast cancer treatment it takes its toll breast cancer treatment take a toll on your mental and physical and impacts your quality of life look at the next phase of which is stay safe and cancer thank you dr jackie thank you so much for such a useful and informative session hope the audience have enjoyed the session I would like uh, to request the audience uh, to subscribe to Pink Caravan a YouTube channel for more updates and for such a useful webinars. Thank you so much and see you soon. Thank you.